Chalice Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are a liberal, open-minded, open-hearted church, a place where you can be exactly who you are and be loved and accepted, where you can love whomever you love, where your beliefs may be different than the person sitting next to you, but where we all share the same set of values. A place where the mission is to inspire, connect, and act, always with love at the center. So welcome. Whether you gather with us every Sunday, once or twice a year, or you are with us this morning for the first time, we are really glad you're here. Today is the fourth in our summer series of playing, and today we will be playing with sound. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> Not <Yeah. true>. Yay! <laughs> I'm Ann McKernan, your worship associate for today. Our service is led by our minister, Reverend Sharon Wiley and our worship musician, Tim McKnight. Yay! And our song leader is Laura Brown, and our sound leader is Julie Ben. <laughs> our tech team is Hope Campbell, Dean Gadet, and Sarah Komnick. And our greeters are Shannon Anderson and Ralph Peters. For those of us here in the chapel, you will notice that we have the windows open along with some other precautions to promote COVID safety. However, if you feel uncomfortable for any reason, you are welcome to step outside where you will be able to hear what is happening inside while on the courtyard. We love to see newcomers joining us in worship. If you are interested in the groups and activities we offer, please make sure you give us your email address and you will receive our email newsletter and e-news calendar. Now, let's take a breath together. We acknowledge that our service is taking place on the stolen territory of the Kumeyaay, meaning humans or people, and the Payamkawisham, meaning Western people. A land acknowledgement works to undo the intentional erasure 
of indigenous people and to support the resilience and strength that all indigenous people have shown. We acknowledge the original inhabitants as a first and critical step toward learning and working with indigenous communities to secure meaningful partnership and inclusion in the stewardship and protection of their cultural resources and sacred homeland. Now we light our chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. I'd like to invite Susan Llewellyn to light our chalice this morning. Our chalice lighting words come from Tara Humphreys. Whether you are from the South, the East, the North, or the West, whether you were born into this faith, found it, or it found you, whether you feel at home or are still trying to find your place, whether you believe in God or open to mystery or still have no idea, whether you are unemployed, underemployed, cobbling things together, overworking or in school, whether you are holding anxiety, grief, confusion, anger, hope, restlessness, or deep peace, Unitarian Universalism has a place for you. And it is right here. And then the second page, and this chalice is lit for you. You're so good at playing the piano. <laughs> I loved it. The words of our call to worship. Ours is the fullness of summer. Sunny days and clear skies can feel at odds with terrible news and hard times. Whatever heaviness you may carry, we invite you to set down your burdens here. As much as you can, will help each other carry what needs to be carried. And for this hour, rest a while, play a while, and open your heart if you can, if you will. May our time together be a salve. May our gathering be a blessing. Let us worship together. So you were invited to bring percussion instruments and other noise makers to worship this morning. And I saw some of you bringing them bringing them in. You may also be sitting somewhere where we, uh, something is just sitting. That thing is for you. Uh, we're happy to share. And um, then we also have, I think, three, it looks like three drums up front with stools in front of them. You are welcome to come forward and play up here, even if you have no idea what you're doing. And, um, and just because someone comes up for one song doesn't mean they own that drum now and, it, and you can't come up for a different one. So if you may not feel up for it yet, but if you've been here before, you know we sing a lot and we're inviting you to play along uh, whenever we're playing and singing together. 
Um, we, we especially hope that the children in the room have something in their hands before they, <laughs> the, and the young at heart uh, as well. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and if you didn't bring something or feel very uncertain about all this, just remember that your hands and feet are also noisemakers, and you are free to clap and stomp and snap, uh, and you're also free to do none of that. It's whatever you want, it's up to you. Feel free to join in as you feel comfortable while we join in singing. Are we stinks? Are we rising for this one? Please rise in body or spirit to sing number 361 and to rejoice and commend found in the gray hymnal, but the words will be projected. <laughs> experience, a poem from Emily Dickinson. <laughs> if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one lonely person into happiness again, I shall not live in vain. We will now tend to each other by sharing and honoring our joys and sorrows. Here in the chapel, you are welcome to write your joy or sorrow onto a candle card, which will be collected from you. And online, please write your joy or sorrow, including your name, into the chat box. These joys and sorrows will be spoken out loud, and then we'll, we will remove this part of the service from the recording that goes onto our YouTube channel. So we have a few minutes of music, so you can write down what you'd like to share. If you would like to send Reverend Sharon a confidential note about your joy or sorrow, or to make a prayer request, please email her. Her email address will be on the screen in a moment.
we'll light our final pillar candle for all the joys and sorrows uh, that may go unshared and unspoken this morning. These two are held in the love and support of our community. Now I'd like to invite the children and anyone who would like, like to come up front for our story when it's time for Hi, my name is Corey, and I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey, I said, yeah, are you busy? I said, nah, she said, so hit the cymbal with your left foot. Hi, my name is Corey, and I work in a drum factory. I have a wife kids and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey. I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the tambourine with your right foot. Hi, my name is Corey and I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey. I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said to hit the drum with your left hand. Hi, my name is Corey, and I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey, I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said to hit the blocks with your right hand. Hi, my name is Corey, and I work in a drum factory. the children as the children leave for classes we join in singing walk on your path with a song so sweet that everywhere you go there is love all around walk on your path with a song so sweet that everywhere you
So this morning, we continue our summer worship series, inviting us to have more play in our lives. As you've already noticed, we are playing with sound this morning. Play keeps us intellectually and emotionally growing, resilient, and strong. Creative, invigorated, imaginative, play enhances learning, social functioning, memory, and self-control. So I have a confession to share this morning and a regret. I'm not usually focused on the regrets of my life, generally speaking, because I can usually appreciate that I learned something and grew, even from events I wouldn't want to live over again. But I do have one regret from my time as your minister. Back in early 2015, in my third year as your settled minister, I got it into my head that we should work on how we clap along with our hymns. Just a quick note that there's a difference between clapping and applause, yes? Sometimes we use these words interchangeably, but when we're talking about clapping this morning, we mean clapping along with the music, clapping along with the song. We're not talking about the applause we might give after a piece of music is over. So back in 2015, I was hearing in our wider UU community that musicians sometimes felt that UUs didn't clap very well. And I thought, hey, we're a music-loving congregation. We can get the hang of this. And so I instituted a set of rules for worship. And the rules included that if you started to clap along with a song, that you needed to commit to keep clapping through the end and that we should have a lead clapper up front and you should try to follow that person's clapping. And if you couldn't, my rule said like it was okay, uh, but you should try. And we kept these rules in our printed order of service for over a year. I feel like the result is that I helped make clapping no fun <laughs> and that I made us timid about clapping along with our hymns. These rules were the exact opposite of what I hope have become central teachings of my ministry to be your authentic self, not to worry about conforming to other people's ideas of who you should be, not to measure ourselves against abstract ideals of perfection. And I'm sorry I did that. So let's let this morning be a bold affirmation that we don't have to clap on the two and the four, whatever that is, <laughs> or whatever else somebody's rules might be. The point of drumming and clapping and snapping and stomping and even just swaying is to move our bodies together, to express ourselves, to feel music inside our bodies and just to have fun together. And if you are someone who doesn't want to do those things and just wants to sit still and listen, you're welcome to be your wonderful self and do just that. And if you are someone who really isn't up for all of this this morning, you're welcome to do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. We also want to give uh, an extra special thanks to our congregant, Julie Ben, our sound leader this morning, who has donated a drum set to Chalice for our use. And we're grateful to her for that. <laughs> and for helping with the worship this morning. So even though you have all the instruments and we've been enjoying using those, we're going to start with a, uh, this. We're not going to start. We've already started. We're going to continue with a group hum. Uh, so when we, when we sing together, our goal is usually to sound the same, uh, to be singing the same thing. But when we do something like a hum or like drumming, and of course, some people would even say even with singing, we might actually want to try and be doing something different than the people around us to make our group sound a little bit more interesting. Um, I ha I've had a teacher say to me that like, if you're singing something different than the person next to you, you're harmonizing, it's great. So, uh, so be mindful of, let's try to be mindful of not having to do exactly the same thing as the people around us. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna come down there and help us hum, and we'll just do this for a minute. Um, I'll talk more in a little bit about what these group activities together do for us. So we're just, we're just going to come a little closer. All right. When you feel ready. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Is this a cool worship service or what? <laughs> you know you're going to a cool church when someone asks you, what was the service about today? And you, your response is drums. <laughs> you might be wondering why we're focusing on percussion instruments today as opposed to string or woodwind or brass instruments. Um, before I answer that question, I just wanted to give a little basic definition of what we mean by percussion instruments. A percussion instrument is generally defined as one in which the sound is produced when some part of the instrument is struck, shaken, or rubbed. This is why technically a piano is a percussion instrument, since the sound is produced when a hammer strikes a string. Okay, so why drums and not uh, didgeridoos? Why shakers and not saxophones? Why tambourines and not tubas? Well, I think that the percussion family of instruments makes sense for a few reasons. First, it's the first time we've done this sort of uh, interactive service exploring sound, I think, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, we regularly ask you to contribute sound to our worship services, but generally that sound comes from your voices, both spoken and sung. Your voice is a musical instrument, by the way, even if you haven't thought of it like that before. It is fundamentally a wind instrument, since we use air, which passes through our vocal cords, to create the sound of our instrument. But you can't see or touch your vocal cords. Percussion instruments, though, allow us to see and feel the instruments that we're playing. Another reason why we're exploring percussion instruments today might be because they are perhaps the more accessible family of instruments meaning that it's easier for most of us to figure out how to play the percussion instruments, at least at a beginner level, in this short amount of time that we have, a little over an hour. One reason percussion instruments might feel more accessible is because many of them only produce rhythms and not pitches. Some percussion instruments are pitched, like the piano, or the xylophone, or the timpani, meaning they are tuned to specific notes. But most percussion instruments are non-pitched, like the tambourine, shakers, and many drums. Non-pitched means that when you're playing these instruments, you don't have to worry about how to produce a specific note. Rhythm is what we focus on. And rhythm is enough to make music. We don't need pitch to make music, actually, because rhythm itself is music. Before I move on, I just wanted to make it clear that even though I've said that percussion instruments might be more accessible and simple in some ways, by no means do I think that the music created by these instruments is any less sophisticated than the music of other instruments. There's one more fundamental reason why percussion seems like a good place to start when exploring sound. Percussion is where our species started. More specifically, it is thought that the drum emerged around 6,000 BC as the first instrument that humans created outside of ourselves. According to the New Grove Encyclopedia of Music and Musicians, drums are the world's oldest and most ubiquitous musical instruments, and the basic design has remained virtually unchanged for thousands of years. In ancient cultures around the world, drums played an important role in society and culture. They were used for communication, spiritual ceremonies, and rituals of celebration and death. Thousands of years later, drums are still important to people around the world for everything from dancing and entertainment to war to music therapy and healing. I believe that one reason why the drum is so common throughout the world is because its beat is like our heartbeat. In the beat of the drum, we feel a connection to the life force inside of us. The next thing we're going to do, you may have done this in, uh, we, sometime before, we're going to make a rainstorm sound together. And we're not, we're not a huge room, but uh, it, it has an added effect if we can sort of, um, uh oh, there goes my brain, stagger. There we go. So, so we want to, when you see, so I'm going to suggest that we're going to go in a, um, what, what is to me a, no, that's not clockwise. I'll go this way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Um, so, so there's, you know, three hand motions, I think, that are part of this, rubbing our hands together, snapping, and, and patting our, our tops of our legs. Um, so then as we, as we do this, you know, at, as you're doing your part, but also listen to what's happening around you. So we're, you know, we're going to get faster, the rainstorm's going to get heavy, and then we'll, we'll ebb back down. Um, okay, and I don't mean like stagger, like, wait a minute, you know, but like, just a few seconds 
uh, it'll take us, I'll start over here and you know, a few seconds later it'll come over here, okay? So what we're doing together may seem simple and playful, but it is also more than that. In his book on healing trauma uh, in general and racialized trauma specifically, Resma Menachem writes about the importance of what he calls harmonizing our bodies. He writes, healing with other human beings requires us to respect, regard, and be in harmony with bodies. The first step is settling our own bodies one by one. The next step is bringing that settling, what I might call grounding and centering, bringing that settling out into the world and getting our bodies in sync with others. When over time enough bodies heal from historical, intergenerational and personal trauma and learn to harmonize that harmony can turn into a culture of resilience and flow. Practices he suggests for harmonizing our bodies with each other include humming together, singing together, group drum <coughs> excuse me, group drumming, and rhythmic group clapping. These practices work most powerfully. In fact, these practices need to be done with people you trust. We hope that trust is high in our gathering this morning. And so now I think I'm turning it over to Julie and Tim. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I wasn't, planning, I wasn't planning on coming up here, but I thought I should give a little intro to this. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about some of the instruments that we brought. So I was hoping that Julie could start by telling us a little bit about a couple of your instruments. I didn't ask you to, that we were gonna do, I didn't tell you we were gonna do this. But, and then if any of you have instruments that you brought from home that you want to tell us about or any questions about any instruments out there, we just kind of want to learn a little bit about them. So, Julie, yeah, can, yeah, you can use that mic right there. Mom? Yeah? We're good? Okay. So I just wanted to start just really quick about with the drum kit. Uh, this is my first drum kit that I got. It's a little baby one. Um, it's, it's got all the components of a larger drum kit, but it's called a Pearl Rhythm Traveler. And it's just, it's a little quieter, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I, so I've had years and years of fun on this. Uh, so it's such a, feels so good to me to be able to donate to a place that I love and that hopefully I can play it more too. Um, I have right here an electric cajon. So one of the, the slides was actually a cajon, which is a box drum, stands for box drum. This one is electric. So it's, it's got um, three different sound banks with 10 sounds in each bank. So I can do anything from like a hone sounding to a drum kit to weird noises. So it's, it's a lot of fun to play that too. Um, and then let's see, what else we got here? I got this little tiny drum, but it's got a big sound. And I'll be uh, using this to uh, kind of lead a little sound circle for us here. So, what are some instruments that we have out, out, in, the, out in the congregation? Kazoo. You, we have a kazoo? Where's the kazoo? <laughs> you, 
you can play it for us? Please do right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Where are the drums? Where are the drums? Who's got a drum? And those are called? This is uh, called a bongo. Mm -hmm. And it has two different sounds, a high sound and a low sound. And it was used by the beatniks during the 50s. <laughs> Poetry. Here tell. <laughs> Where are some other drums? What is the drum? Any other drums? No? How about shakers? Do we have any shakers? I think Reverend Sharon has a shaker. Oh, I do. <coughs> the egg shaker. And then we have tambourines, right, which are not really shakers, but sort of close. And then I saw a rain stick out there somewhere, is that right? Yeah, listen to that. Isn't that cool? Any other instruments that we're not sure of what they are? No. Ah. So that's, that's a wood block. Mm -hmm. It's a very creative name. <laughs> Yeah. A bird call. Yeah. Lovely. And then those are claves, which you, you, you strike them together, and then they'll make a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? What do we have? Oh, we've got some congas up here. These two, which are normally played as a pair, right? Or, or as three sometimes. And then what about the, the drum over here? So this is a djembe, okay, and then I thought I saw a talking drum out there somewhere with the with the with the little the strings on the side. But ah, uh, there we go. Is is what makes them different their size? Like, is a djembe always that size, or is it something else that makes it a djembe? It's just basically the the shape. Uh, you know, they can be very large, and they can. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's the, so it's the shape uh, that and that helps create the sound. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna. I think we're gonna use. We're gonna, we're gonna actually play now, and, and uh, so that's why we wanted to tell you about them first. Yeah. Does anybody want to come up and play one of the congas, or uh, it's there's no right or wrong answer. It's just you know, come on up and there you go. Okay, so I'm just going to do a real basic beat, and you guys can sit, stand, whatever you feel like doing. Just want to make this a really fun heartbeat kind of activity. So you can play whatever you want. You can play along with me, or you can do your own thing.
Dios. For our second hymn this morning, we uh, encourage you to stay seated and use your instruments for this number. It is um, 1071 from the Teal Hymnal. We've never done this song before that I'm aware of on the dusty earth drum. And uh, Julie is going to start a beat for this song. And um, we would like you to join in, but try to match her beat so that as we sing and be together, we're making a joyful, a joyful noise, I guess, as they say. <laughs> Offering is an expression of the generosity that makes our congregational life possible. As Buddhist teacher Sharon Salzberg writes, generosity is characterized by the inner quality of letting go or relinquishing, being able to let go, to give up, to renounce, to give generously. These capacities spring from the same source within us. When we practice generosity, we open to all of these liberating qualities simultaneously. Please text your donation to Chalice. If you haven't texted a donation before, know that, the, what, that once you text the amount, you'll get a reply with a link to follow to enter your credit card information. If you have already entered this information previously when you've donated, you won't need to enter it again. If your Sunday donation is meant to be part of your pledge payment, please make sure to indicate pledge after the dollar amount. The phone number for text donations will be on the screen in a moment. If you prefer to make an in-person donation of cash or check, there are envelopes in a donation box to the left of the chapel double doors. You can leave those donations after the service. Please give generously.
dedicating our offering with words of affirmation. At Chalice UU Congregation, love is at the center of everything we do. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer using our bodies? Um, you're welcome to rise uh, if you're comfortable. You're also invited to remain seated. Just be aware of the people around you. Um, there's not a right or wrong way to pray with our bodies. Um, you can look up samples of prayers on YouTube, but uh, this morning I just invite us to think about the words that I'm, that I'm offering and how our bodies can reflect um, so you might want to do what I'm doing, but you might want to do what you want to do, uh, which is welcome as well. So, spirit of life, 
spirit of laughter, spirit of play. We are grateful for the presence of laughter and play in our lives and in our community, community and communities that we belong to. We feel ourselves and know ourselves deeply connected and interconnected to each other and the world around us. And so we uh, open ourselves to that interconnectedness that we can feel the, the joy and energy and laughter in the world around us, the beauty of summer, the energy and warmth of the sun, and we can gather all of those uh, good feelings and invite them into our bodies, our hearts, nourishing us, strengthening us, sustaining us. And in touch with our own feelings of gratitude and blessedness, we take those positive feelings and offer them back out into the world so that what feeds us and nourishes us is composted and goes back out to feed and nourish others, other friends, other communities, and the beautiful natural world around us as well. With our hearts full, we say amen. Please rise in body or spirit to sing hymn number 1020, Gloria Yah, from our teal hymnal. The words will be projected. Feel free to use your instruments. In the spirit of play this summer. No matter your burdens, no matter your grief, may you let your heart be lightened, may you savor the sunshine, and sit under blue skies daydreaming. May you enjoy lemonade or iced tea or agua fresca, sitting in your backyard or a friend's. May all the blessings of easy days be yours and ours. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. You're invited to close our time together by singing the well. After our closing hymn, please return to your seats for a moment for a brief announcement.
And this announcement comes from the Imagining Liberation Spirit Study team. Please join us for a workshop, Imagining Liberation, our spirit study topic for 2023 to 2024. This will happen next week, Sunday, August 13th at 1015 between services in the Rainbow Room. Refreshments will be served. Child care is available. Um, now more than ever, you use are called to the imaginative and material work of liberation. While white supremacy culture harms and is toxic to us all, it does not affect us all in the same way. Together, we're going to explore aspects of white supremacy culture and delve into antidotes. Please join us in a safe space to explore and learn more about this topic and ourselves. The workshop will be led by Anne McKernan. Here, she's really nice. You, you probably enjoy it. <laughs> Amber Vlasnik, who's also very nice, and Dean Gannett, who's also very nice. Thank you. Enjoy your refreshments. <laughs>